Hey you guys, okay, so today we are talking about what happened yesterday that I'm still kind of like in shock over. When you find something like a treasure or a, you know, you, you just find something that you've been looking for or you win something or you, it's just, that's the feeling, okay? And I'm still in disbelief. I've talked to, you know, friends about it and I've, I've you know, I'll get, I'll get into the whole thing, but um, it's just the, it's the craziest story. It is the find of like all time and we're gonna get into it. So after yesterday, you know, I had a really fun girls day with a friend of mine. You know, we got to get out like just us, like just by ourselves because usually we have the girls because our, our daughters are best friends and um, growing up we were always best friends and it's just funny because we used to do this all the time, like we used to get out a lot. We just had not done that in so long. And um, we went a few places and it was just, the day was wonderful, but something happened that made it just like extra crazy and it was just too good not to share, right? So what I was gonna do tomorrow, we'll do next week. And um, I have so many just favorites and, and good things coming up and like beauty stuff. What I'm wearing today, I will link to, I wanted to get in to like, you know, the makeup that I was wearing and a little bit about the clothes, which I'll talk about in just a second. But um, I think I'm gonna do that in my next video. I'm gonna do like a whole big favorites thing. And uh, yeah, and so I'll just link to what I'm wearing and then we'll talk about it more next time. Um, but my earrings, you guys, if you did not grab these hoops, I got them maybe two years ago uh, during the anniversary sale, but they sell them all the time. I would describe them as like, like I would call them like, if I was like, okay, if, th if these were mine, I would call them like a spotlight hoop, right? Because they just, when you put them on, you can have on no makeup, you can have on like basic makeup, and when you put them on, it just like lights up your whole face. They're so good. They have a little bit of sparkle to them, but you can wear them with the like fanciest thing or with the most casual thing like I did today. And then I've got these little huggy hoops that are kind of similar that have um, some pretty stones on those as well, like pave. Both of them are kind of like a pave style. And I forgot to put my necklace on, but whatever. I don't wanna have to like go upstairs and make a big deal about it, so. Um, and then this, you guys, this is the little suit that I talked about about several months ago. They come in different colors. If you didn't get the tank, because I really just think that the tanks are pretty special. Um, I think they might still have them in a few colors, but I think this one's sold out. But if you can just get this and the matching joggers, or they're not even joggers, like I don't even know. Let me. Um, they're like just perfectly cinched at the bottom. It feels like you're wearing such just a luxe, like cashmere feel cozy. I just love it. So um, check that out. Very, very affordable. And um, I'll link to that too. Okay. So let me tell you what we did. I love an antique store. Brad and I years ago used to do, I think I did like a vlog where we were antiquing at this antique store that I love, which is the one that we went to. Um, a week or two ago, um, you know, I went to a different one with my mother-in-law and then back with my friend. And um, it's just, I've always done that. It's fun. I love going to antique stores. I feel, you know, you can use the term like thrift store, antique store, but I feel like a thrift store is more so like a, like a Goodwill type situation or something called differently, but it's like you go in and it's just a big store. I feel like an antique store, even though it's not all antiques, it's like, you know, you go in, it's booths. You know what I'm saying. It's just typical. You know, some people rent booths and they sell their things. Some of them might be like newer things. Some might be truly antiques. Uh, you know, whatever. Some might sell candles or any anything that they want. You know what I'm saying? Well, a few weeks ago when we went to a different one, I was like, well, I really want to go back to my favorite one. So we'll do that together. We'll have lunch. And that's what we did yesterday. And we also went into a mall, which I have not been into a mall, which was honestly pretty depressing, which I kind of find malls depressing anyway. I don't know. I just have when I was a kid, there was something nostalgic about a 90s mall. You walked in, it smelled like a, you know, chlorinated water fountain and like, you know, you'd put your, throw your pennies in the fountain and you'd ride the elevator. And I just remember being a kid back in like the 80s and the early 90s and Cumberland Mall was like, I just remember so pretty like with all of the fountains. And then like I grew up going to town center and I mean, that's super depressing now. And I worked there, you know, like in college and stuff. And now we're closer. Um, we go to like North Point. If we are going to go to a mall, that's what we go to. But 
Um, you know, like, I think the ones that are closer to the cities, uh, you know, like here, like Linux and Phipps and stuff like that, which is more like, I think they're going to survive, hopefully, but like, just those 90s nostalgic malls are just, and I remember even when I was super little, we'd go to this one called Cobb Center, and I think all they had was just like a riches. I don't know, I just, but it's so, it's kind of depressing, and North Point isn't that bad, but I do feel like it's kind of, um, there's some really, you know, kind of down areas in there where it's just like, oh my gosh, everything's closed, and it's just sad. So, I don't know, and I'm just not really a huge mall goer anyways. I shop online a lot, but it was fun getting out with my friend. Oh my gosh, okay, you guys. So, I found the find of all time, like I said, at the antique store. We went there first. I'll go through, and then I'll show you what I got at Bath & Body Works. It's the makeup and stuff that I got at the mall. I got a new perfume that I think you guys are really going to like. But I'm just going to go for it. I'm going to, you know, go in the order of the day. Went to get coffee, went to the antique store. Week, weekday morning, no one's there. You can get your cart, you can have your coffee, and just be like weaving in and out. You know, like you just look. Yeah, you look at it. It's just so much to take in. And it's, for me, like a treasure hunt. Not so much like I'm trying to find things worth money. That's not what I mean. But just little treasures for my house. Like, oh my gosh. Okay, I didn't know She's just like right there. You're probably like, tell me what is back there. Okay, I found this. It's like a Madonna statue. It's Mary. I don't know. I just thought she was special. I thought like on a like on a buffet or something, like behind like some like some books and some. I don't know. I just thought she was so pretty. So I'm happy about that. So you know, you can find little finds, and that that's what I mean like about treasures, like cutesy little things. There's one you know booth where an artist like had some of her original stuff, and it's glaring. I just thought this was such a pretty angel. I thought the colors were gorgeous, and with the frame and everything, it was sixty-five dollars, which I didn't think was you know I thought it was really pretty. You could prop it up somewhere, or hang it you know somewhere. I thought it'd be pretty in Olivia's room or. I don't know, I might put it somewhere else, but I just thought that was really cool. Okay, and I think my Mary statue was like $12 or something. So, oh, and then I got this rug. Saw this rug. And these were on a booth, like they're, they were newer, but I like these rugs that look, what's the word? I know, is, is it like K-I-L-I-M rug? Is that what it is? They're pretty expensive when you look for them places, and I don't know, I just, I think, Whatever, I don't know, we'll get into it. Because I, I got the new rug for in here. We'll talk about that because also, I'm going to show you my new little cabinet that came. But I found this, thought it was really cute. I don't know where exactly I'm going to put it, but I just thought it was pretty. Um, should we talk before I get into my treasure? Real quick, I'll show you this. It's in the background. Oh, I was going to start with. Okay, so I told you guys that it, at the end of August or September, I think it was September 1st, I ordered this piece. I'll show you guys a close-up of it. It's a little taller. It's actually made as a bar. It's it's sold as a bar, but it's kind of in the same realm as my credenza that I showed a few uh, video before last in the family room, where it's like if you need storage in a room, which in this living room, zero storage. I have no cabinets. I don't have any enclosed storage anywhere. And I had like my mirrored waterfall desk, which is old. I've had that for well, not old. I got it like eight years ago when we moved in here. One of my favorite things ever, and it was in our foyer for years. So at Christmas, you know, I kind of, I don't know, I switched it around. Some years it was in here, so I don't know. Y'all know I like to switch things around. But I originally got this piece for the foyer, thinking, you know, oh, that'll be nice. You know, it's real shallow, and it's, and it'll go in there. But then, when it came, finally, like I said, I had to wait on it a long time. Like, what, five months, four or five months? It, when it finally came and I put it in the foyer, I was like, oh, this is so good. And then I started, like, when I was looking through here, I was like, oh, my gosh, it would look so good in here. And it's one of those things you can truly use as a bar. The doors open. Um, you, know, you could swing it out and have, like, a whole thing. It, you know, swings past that lamp or swings in front of it. It doesn't swing to hit the lamp. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's just such a cool... Wait, let's lay it over there. I don't think I was closing the door on it. Um, it's such a cool thing, and I just I just thought it was beautiful. So I swapped and put it in here, put the mirror thing back in the foyer, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is perfect. So I here's what, you know, don't overlook pieces like that. Don't think, like, if I need storage in a room, I've got to get just, like, 
you know, some typical little cabinet or something. Look to some different types of things because this doesn't scream like bar when you look at it or like, you know, what is that? It's, it's slightly taller and I like that because I've got my chairs here and, you know, usually we walk through here or behind here um, to pass through this room and this protrudes less. It doesn't stick out as far as the desk did and I like that there's some height to it. You know, like over these chairs. So, anyway, it's all worked out with that, and I'll, um, like I said, I'll show you guys some close-ups of that, and I might post some photos of it on my Instagram. Okay, and then um, I'll talk about this rug later, okay? Because you can't even see it. We want to get to uh, right. We want to get to my treasure. So we're walking through. You know, I've got my cart. Got like Mary in the cart. She, I think. You know what? I think she was like my good luck and I had this like angel. This was like a whole meant to be type of thing. Okay, I know you guys are gonna be like, oh my gosh, Stephanie. So I'm looking, you know, you're just like with your cart, you're like you're skating and my friend's behind me, you know, we're just kind of like, you're at just like a little pace and you're, you know, just scanning, scanning and, and then I was like, oh my gosh, and I stepped back and at first, you know, I, there was this bag and it was hanging around a mannequin. You know, it wasn't set up all nice or anything. It was in a bigger booth, like one of those that like passes through a section, not just like a little one. Um, she had furniture, just art, like just typical antique store looking type of stuff, right? Typical looking stuff. There were a few Louis Vuitton bags that weren't like, oh, let's get excited. It was like, there were those big old ones that like flapped over that were like luggage. And she was wanting like $1,200 for those. They were huge, you know, like duffel bag, like a big old duffel bag. Ones that were very weathered looking do you know what i mean like that for the leather looked very orangey brown like just really old which beautiful but that's not what I, you know I'm, I'm not excited about that and then there was like a she had an older fendi bag like from the 90s there and you know she wanted about i think 700 bucks for that and like okay you know like looking around at everything um and this all happened like within a split second right like i saw the bag i saw that she had other things in there and there was like a little hermes box that had like one of those bangles that were those um what are they like those not like the ones that have like the h kind of like those click clack ones but the ones that look like a scarf print like a resin you know that look kind of very loud you know like they look like they have a, a print on them she had one of those and asking like about what she'd pay like for on fashion file or like if someone was going to resell something which i feel like that's about what I think but then like you know looking all around and then there's this mannequin okay and that's what i kind of was like and i, I was about maybe six feet away from it and I kind of like squinted and it was just slung around a mannequin there were other little like beaded change purses on this like headless mannequin and you know like you'll pass by a booth like where there'll be like a mannequin wearing a fur and you'll be like whoa you know um kind of one of those type of deals right so this bag was there and I looked and I'm thinking I don't even know how to just explain like what my thought process was but I was like that's a that's a Chanel bag and I went over to it and I picked it up, and when I saw it, I like almost, like my throat, like I was just like, like I felt like I was having anxiety, you know? And it is a mini reissue from last year. 2020 date code came, like I was, I was flipping out, okay? Like I looked inside of it and I was like, oh my gosh. I have, and I'm gonna show you all the details, okay? I've texted friends about it, I've texted a Chanel person about I like, and I knew when I saw it, even, the price was embarrassing, okay? Not embarrassing high, it's very, I found a treasure, okay? Let's just say that. Great, I, I got a great deal, I got an embarrassing deal, okay? And Brad was like, Tiffany, don't, I'm gonna show it all up close in a minute too, but I was like, Tiffany, don't, you shouldn't talk about the price. And for me, a lot of times, like if I show a bag, I'm not gonna talk about the price because the price is high. And I don't like to say, Thousands and thousands of dollars. I spent thousands of dollars with this. Because I'm not like, it's not even like a helpful thing. It's just like, you can figure it out. I don't know. But this is like for the opposite. Re like, I just feel like I was like, I got to get out of here with this. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even want it in my car. Like, I just want to buy this bag and get out of here. Do you know what I mean? This is one of my all-time favorites. It is my old reissue. She's very worn in. She's probably from like, I don't know. She's like over 10 years old, okay? Not very old, but probably a lot older than, probably older than that. I can tell. Hold on. Let's see. Let me look at you. Oh, yeah, she's old. She's very old. She's like 15 years old. So, 
you don't know about the reissues, it's kind of, you know, the they come, you know, as you carry them, the point gets more pronounced. I love the soft handles, um, the leather, kind of the, and they, they come in all different colors, all different, but the, the leather, you know, that sort of worn looking leather, the ruthenium hardware, not all of them have that, some of them have the, the gold that looks, I don't know what it's called, but it's like the worn looking gold. Okay, my, one of my favorite all time bags, they are expensive. Reissue bags are almost more so sometimes. I don't even, I'm not like a bag expert like on the price, the current pricing, but I just know that one. Reissues, they're expensive. I think they're all expensive, but I'm just saying. Sometimes the reissues are even more than like the regular flat bags. And when I saw this one and I was like, you know, I saw, I don't even know what to say, you guys, okay? Um, it's a little dust bag. It had the little, it has the card, which I'll show you guys. A little like crinkly paper was in it. It was like just you know, like the Chanel does, like you know, the little like what's it called? Like the little accordion, like pleated paper, the bags with the ribbon, which is what the minis come with. The mini bag from Chanel, as I've said for years, is my like I can't even I don't even know what I'm talking like. This is just I can't even realize y'all don't even realize how exciting this is. Um, like I don't think it had been carried much at all. The mini bags from Chanel, like I said, are one of my favorites. I just think it's such a good size I think it you know it holds plenty they're not huge and just like when I felt the chain and I, I was like I cannot believe what I'm feeling like when I took it off the mannequin I was holding it I was like and you know the tag was very deep de not detailed but kind of you know Chanel bag this much and they were selling you had to pay separately for this this had a little tag on it for $25 I was like well I'm gonna get the didn't have the box, but okay, honestly, compared to how much this was, this, I can't even believe they were asking, like 25 was a lot to ask for this compared with, I, I'm embarrassed, okay, I don't want to say embarrassed, but like, I don't want to say the price and someone be like, oh my gosh, Tiffany, like they didn't know, or they, that's not the case, okay, it was the price, that's what it said, I paid the price, I didn't haggle, I grabbed this, I went to the front, I paid for it, the woman at the front was looking at it like, a guy when he was packaging it was like, like he went over and like looked at the tag and he was like, okay. I just think, and my friend said, you know, it wasn't one of those bat like a Chanel bag that has like the giant C's on it or, you know, maybe they didn't, you know, but here's what, I think, you know, when people do these resale businesses or they have a consignment business, they probably, they're not just renting at that booth. They're probably selling online. They're doing a lot. And they've got people working for them. They're doing all these things. Okay, I'm not even going to get into it because I don't want people to say, like, oh, if they call me and want it back, like, I'm not giving it back, okay? I think the bags they were selling at the antique store, the Louis Vuitton, the old, the old Louis Vuitton, the old Fendi, they had Burberry, like a few Bur Burberry totes and stuff, um, that weird kind of Hermes bracelet. Those are things that, you know, I could see because... Those are things that you don't really, you know, probably not get a good value for online. I said I wasn't going to get into this and like the value and what I think happened, but this was there and I think they had priced it based on the size compared to what those other two, I don't even, uh, y'all, y'all, she's perfect. I mean, it is the most, besides, you know, the leather is just, that's how the leather looks on these. You can tell this one's newer. The sides, you know, have that nice, you know, they're a little tighter. It's what, you know, you could kind of see over time, you know, the, the, the point on the top will get a little more pointy. And that used to drive me nuts with that reissue because I'm so used to having, you know, the larger reissues like that one have the flap. But when you buy a mini, mini bags do not have the double flap. And this is what it looks like on the inside. And, um, you know, just with the Chanel made in France with a metallic silver. Can you see that right there? And that's how all minis are made, with the little flap or the little slip pocket, the large Chanel made in France stamp, and then the zip, and then the card. The card's a little, um, I mean, it looks, you could tell like the card's been kind of slid in and out of this. And I like to keep the, that's one thing, when, with my Chanel bags, I like to keep the cards always in the bag. It's just a weird thing. Chanel bags are very specific every year. The font, is that the right word for a numeral or the serif or whatever? They might change the shape of the zeros. They might change the shape of the twos. What's the other one? Um, every year 
Some years they use the same little C's, like it'll have just like the C's, or then it'll have some years it has like glitter in it or not. And um, so when I looked in this and I saw that it had the 30 date code, which is from 2020, and I know that because like when I buy bags, like I'm not checking out the date code a lot, but when I've looked at things in the past, like, you know, that was something that I kind of like educated myself about, like if I'm gonna buy something pre-owned or, or whatever. So when I looked in there and I saw the 30, cause I have a bag from the same, like that date code, one of my new newer bags. And I was like, oh my gosh, like this, cause that's usually when you see old bags, like and she had older, and there were older bags in the booth and, or if you found like an old Chanel at an antique store, which I never have, okay, and this one even is, like it's gonna be old. And so that's another, when I saw this, I was like, you know, it's like real, you know, tight on the side. I just, okay, I don't know what to say, you guys, other than I found the find of a lifetime at the antique store. And I, it like smells so good. I don't even, it's so bizarre, okay? You can do it like that. My crossbody, like the mannequin had. But I just think maybe, Okay, I don't know. I don't want to get into why and how and, um, you know, I'm not going to call out the exact place where I got this and I'm sorry about that, but I'm just not. Um, not that I'm not being helpful or anything like that, but just because I don't feel right. I don't know. I'm just not going to. Go to the antique store, find something. You're not going to go find that at the same one. It's not like she's got a stock. Of there was a little, we were looking every, like, we, we were like, okay, let's, you know, before we left, we were like, let's go back and just make sure that we didn't miss anything. But we were only like not even a quarter of the way through the store and it takes a long time to get through the store. You know, you're weaving in, you don't want to miss anything. And after that was in my bag, I was like, I started feeling like, I was like, I, mean, I just want to buy this and get out of here. Do you know what I mean? But we took our time, we looked around the rest of the store, but the whole time I felt like I had this treasure that wasn't quite mine. Do you know what I mean? I was like, I need to buy this. I just need to get out of here. It was like the best. It was so great. So I was texting friends of mine about it and um, you know I it's not a matter of like authenticity like I it's hard to say like I just know you know what to look for you know what things look like I did talk to somebody about it that was like oh my god you know that actually can authenticate and they were like oh my gosh not that I needed that because honestly I would have paid what it was and just taken the risk ha having not known if it you know but it, you guys I found a treasure, okay? I found the ultimate treasure at the antique store. I just can't believe it. Craziest thing I've ever, it's just absolutely, absolutely like unreal. And my friend of mine, one of our trips, I brought this on the trip years ago. This is like my old favorite. She's worn in, she's comfortable. It's not like a, you know, she's edgy, but she's classic. If you don't know about the reissues, when Coco Chanel was alive, this is what the bags looked like. And that's why they're called the reissues because then years and years later, when they came out again, they called it the reissue. I believe, I, don't quote me on this, but I think Karl Lagerfeld, when he took over years and years ago, this was like after her death, he's the one that did the interlocking logo, correct? Like he's, like that didn't even exist when she was a lot correct like right or or maybe they the, that logo was there but they didn't put them on the bags so this is what coco chanel's bags with something is just so classic to me about a reissue it's not pretentious it's not like i like a i like a classic logo I look too flashy all the time but this bag though is just classy and classic but edgy this color combo i have been obsessed with so when i walked by and i saw my favorite bag in my favorite size version. I'm telling you, Mary brought me some good vibes. Okay? And she's my um my lucky Mary. That's bad to say. My my guardian Mary. I know someone's like getting offended. I want to keep talking about it because I just I don't think I've like really covered enough about it like cuz it's just that crazy of a thing that happened. And then just, I don't feel bad about it, okay? There was a sticker on it, I paid what they asked, and I went about my business, okay? So, um, okay. Brad and Levy came home, they brought me Diet Coke. Which honestly, I don't love a Diet Coke. I like, I like like a fountain drink, but it's just, I wish more places had Diet Pepsi. I know, and I'm from the South. Brad got me hooked on Diet Pepsi years ago. I used to only drink Diet Coke 
or Coke Zero, which now I really can't stand that. He really likes Coke Zero, but he loved Diet Pepsi, and I was like, this is crazy, like, gross, no. And um, now I, like, I can't go back to anything. It's, like, so fresh. The only time I can really drink a Diet Coke is if it has, I, you know, what's the big deal? Like, now everybody's, like, talking about Diet Coke, whatever. Now I'm talking about Diet I'm just saying I like, I like Pepsi instead of Diet Coke. Okay, Diet Pepsi. Um very groundbreaking stuff diet coke nowadays all right so let me look okay do y'all get it i mean to me it's like to find something like that right that i it's got cricket that i really love and to get a good deal and that's the point of going to a store like that you want to find a treasure whether it's like something that you love that costs 50 cents or whether it's like, wow, I found something that is valuable for a deal. Like, I don't know, my mind's still blown. But, um, okay. Also some, okay, so I wanna show you what I got at the mall. And also there's something else that I wanna talk about and I thought I might do it during my next video. But my friend and I talked about this for so long while we were out yesterday and I kinda wanna tell you guys and do like a little deep dive, a deeper dive on this like murder documentary on the murder on Middle Beach. And I know not all of you are into that, so we'll do that at the end, okay? So let's go ahead and continue. So Bath and Body Works, y'all. I didn't get much, but I really love this. The, uh, the antibacterial hand spray in the original, okay? This is not the unscented because gross. Like I, I said this before, like I need some excitement. Like I want something that smells good. The one that says the original is so good. It's like cucumber melon, but not sickening. It's fresh. Not the cucumber melon's sickening. No, good. It's fresh. It's good. Like my friend was like, okay, that's the best one because that's what I had in my car. And she was like, that's like the best one I've ever smelled. And I can't believe it's just like the original. Um, and so she got some of that too. And I thought I'll grab another one because years ago, you could not find hand sanitizer spray. Like I remember when Olivia was a baby, and, you know, I was frequenting, like, you know, the diaper aisle and the baby aisle and stuff like that. The Honest Company was the first place that I ever saw that had yummy smelling spray hand sanitizer. They had the grapefruit, they had an original lavender, whatever. And I bought that for years, and then other companies started doing it too. So, Bath and Body Works has a lot of good ones. The original is what you want. So, I got that. And then, um, my friend went in there because she wanted to get some like some more home sprays now I don't do that a lot like I'm not always spraying home sprays there's one by Febreze called Febreze one has like natural ingredients or something so it's better and you can also use it on fabrics but it's like in an air freshener can kind of with a trigger it's not aerosol but it like sprays out in a beautiful poof okay it's not like the fabric kind that like soaks it's not that and it's called Bamboo, the Febreze One Bamboo. It's so good. But my friend sprayed this, and I was like, oh my gosh, that's like the best thing I've ever smelled. And I texted last night, she was like, oh my gosh, like, have you used the room spray? It's like cotton and freesia, okay? It is fresh. It's like laundry, but not like, lo not like, like, hit you in the face, like gross laundry. It's, but it has that freesia hit. It is the fresh, it's like in a dream world, like what my house would always smell like. So I got three of those because they were doing like three for something. These are so small, but they're really concentrated. That's what it's called, concentrated room spray. And then um, at the checkout, I got this, the vanilla buttercream shea butter hand cream. I really like that they're packaging their hand creams like this. Maybe I'm out of the loop. Maybe I haven't bought any hand cream from them. Oh my gosh, that cotton free just smells so good. Now, I don't think that they make wallflowers or a candle or anything i think that they had a hand soap in that but um get the cotton and freesia room spray and thank me later like your house is gonna smell amazing like like i'm like it just like looking at my chair and looking at everything i'm like i'm just thinking like mm, that chair smells real good or like if you've got like upholstery or something like spray it in there it just isn't that weird i don't know it just smells like yummy like clean fabric okay Anyways, I thought this one was cute because it had sprinkles on it and it's the vanilla buttercream, but it smells just like vanilla buttercream. It smells like a, the yummiest like cupcake frosting deliciousness. Okay, and then um, a few more things. I grabbed another one of my Armani 
uh, Luminous Silk Number no. 2 Concealers. These are so good uh, because my friend wanted to try it. And so she was looking at it, and I was like, actually, I'll just grab another one because mine, you're starting to, like, see through it a little, and I'm, like, scraping the sides. I use under my eyes. Um, it's not cakey. It doesn't look like, like, paint. I like an under-eye concealer. I think nothing makes you, that just, like, wakes you up. I don't want to use a ton of it. You can use the tiniest amount, and it's just perfect. But what it's really good for, too, like, I don't like to contour... Yeah, I'm not like heavily contouring my face or like putting the light here and that. I don't do all that. But just to put the tiniest bit right here on your nose, like just right down the middle and then a doop. You don't even have to contour the sides of your nose because the lightness kind of just, you know, I'll put a little bit of bronzer, but I'm not like, okay, whatever. Um, but I kind of want to, I don't know. I mean, I, I like to do that, but I just don't do that every day. I'm just saying like, just if you could use a good, good concealer. And then I wasn't looking for perfume, obviously, like I'm not looking for anything like that, but I saw this and I had not smelled these clean, um, this clean brand in a while, and this is the Skin, okay? Um, years ago, I remember I had one called like Shower, was it by Clean? I think so, I think it was Clean. But anyways, this brand is kind of rebranded and I'll, I've got to say, I'm going to ditch I'm, this lid. I'm not a fan. I don't like the wood. It's like a whitewashed wood lid. I don't know. I just wish they would have done even the same, like, shape. Just solid black or like a cream color or like silver. You know what I mean? But I don't own the company, so it's not my... It's not, obviously, it's not my call. But I think I'm just going to ditch it and have it like this. But, oh my gosh, you guys, this is so good. And when I sprayed it on... Because I was smelling all the other ones because I was like, oh, I remember I liked that. You know, and I like a clean scent. I love the Byredo Blanche, Blanche, which is kind of like a soapy smell. So I like scents like that every now and then. But when I saw the one called Skin, I was kind of like, that's odd. So it says the family is floral musk. It is like a musk, but it's a soft musk that's a little powdery and maybe just a touch floral so that you're not just overly like too much musk. Because I'm not a huge just like straight musk fan. Musk. Um, it's a really good one and it's light and it's fresh, but when I sprayed it on, like when I was testing it, it reminded me of the deodorant that I wear. The, okay, so if I wear an antiperspirant, which is very rare, I haven't done that in a long time, the, um, Donna Karen Cashmere Mist is so good. Okay, it just smells creamy, delicious, satisfying. But if you buy the Cashmere Mist perfume, which I made the mistake of, I don't say mistakes, I know there's people that love it, years and years ago, it doesn't smell anything like that to me. It doesn't smell anything like the deodorant. I've always loved the La Vanilla Vanilla Coconut deodorant. And that's what I've been wearing now for the last couple years. Right after Olivia was born, I switched back to my antiperspirant. Because I just felt, I don't know if it was like hormones or whatever, I just didn't feel like my natural deodorants were working for me. But the last several years, I've been back on that vanilla coconut. And it smells like the Donna Karen Cashmere Mist to me. It always has had that scent to it. And that's what this smells like, okay? Long story short. This smells like the Cashmere Mist deodorant mixed with the vanilla coconut had a baby. But it's not like overly like, oh, that smells like tuberose, or oh, that smells very vanilla, or very this or that. It does have a lot of vanilla to it, and that's what my friend said. She was like, wow, that's very vanilla. So it's like, yeah, musk, floral. I don't know if the floral, like, it just doesn't like really hit me in the face, but it's a very just comforting, warm scent that I think is very sexy without being like, okay, you went to Bath and Body Works and got a vanilla body lotion, or that's something like, I don't like things that might smell too much like something like even this cotton freesia you know what i mean it's a it's a fresh scent but it's not like oh you just sprayed an apple room spray or oh it smells like peach in here or it smells like a pine tree I, do you know what i'm saying like i like scents that are good and fresh but you can't quite put your finger on them and so that's what i got at the mall and I'm just so excited. Like, I don't know. That bag is just, it's exciting. Like, I didn't know I was going to be going to the antique store and, and finding a Chanel bag. And so the joke the rest of the day was my friend was like, well, your Chanel bag was cheaper than that. Or, you know, like, you got your Chanel bag for cheaper than that. So, and, and listen, I'll go back to it. You know, 
I was nervous going through the store, not because I thought like I've done something wrong or anything, because like I said, it was marked, I paid what it said, the bag was marked separately, it said Chanel, it was, you know, it wasn't like they thought they were marking something else. But when I, I was thinking to myself, okay, like I recognize the people that work there, there's two women and a man that, you know, work the checkout, and I'm thinking, they're going to know, like they're, I, I just feel like someone's going to catch this and be like, this should be more than that, or wow. But I guess that, and that's what I was talking to somebody about. They were like, you shouldn't feel bad because that is what the fun of shopping in an antique store or at a thrift store or anywhere is finding something that is good. So I'm really excited. I just do feel like there was a mix up. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. But whatever, I'm really excited. So I just can't believe it. Um, okay, so listen. Let's. If you're done, you're done, whatever. If you haven't, if you want to stick around and talk some like murder documentary stuff, then just stay with me. I feel like I got, I mean, it's been a little long of a video, but it's not as long as I thought it would be at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about this now. So my next video, a lot of it, I don't, I don't want to combine this with my next one. Um, okay. If you haven't seen this, there's no spoilers really because it doesn't come to like whatever and, and I'll let you know if, if you want to watch murder on Middle Beach and you want to see every little detail and you don't watch the then I'll see you next week okay um like I said no big spoilers or anything but like if you're just, I'm I would if I were you and I hadn't seen it I might leave because but it, but yeah if you're like I don't want to watch because that's how I like to watch I like to just really immerse myself in the whole thing and like not be swayed by anything but if you've already watched it I think you'll find this super interesting and you're obsessed with it like I am um, I've gradually gotten more obsessed with it Let's explain to you why um, or if you just have no interest in watching the show whatsoever I still think that you'll find this story interesting a lot of hand move not a lot of hand work here okay so Okay, Murder on Middle Beach. Several weeks ago, I talked about this documentary. I think it was a video I was doing in here. I said, yeah, I watched Murder on Middle Beach, gave you the premise of it, um, and, and explained to you that I really enjoyed it. And I've watched it again since because I just could not get it out of my mind. Going through different, like, what could have happened, my, um, and I'll, I'll kind of give you a rundown in a second, but recently one of, uh, another podcast that I listen to, True Crime Obsessed, that I've talked about for years. It's a guy and a girl, and they're really funny. They talk about um, whether it's like a murder documentary or they've done some podcast, like they covered serial. Like they'll go through it. They're, they play clips. I mean, the editing is amazing because they play clips from the actual documentary um, as they're explaining it, but they're doing like their funny take on it. And but it's appropriate. It's just so good. Well, they did it on Murder, murder on Middle Beach last week or the week before and I just did not agree with I don't know and I guess we all disagree on things but I was like oh my gosh like was I crazy when I watched it that I really thought it was this person and they were so much like no and even when I said I that I thought I've got to watch it again and I had been kind of wanting to watch it again so the other night I started it again it's a very quick you can get through it very quickly um, six episodes it's like an HBO Max thing we have um, on our cable we, we watch because we have HBO so um, I just pulled it up on my cable and watched it murder on Middle Beach so it's a guy maybe in his late 20s um, named Madison and his mother was murdered oh my gosh don't quote me on dates but it was around 2012 2013 okay so it wasn't a ton of time ago but it was you know a decent amount of time ago and um, he, the last six or seven years, has been doing a documentary, like, on his mother's death to try to figure it out. So he's recorded interviews with people. So, like, for example, this was something, you know, I really understood even more watching it the second time. Like, there were, there were interviews, like, with his aunt, his mother's sister. Like, maybe they're more recent you know she's had a hard life like she just looks a lot older and you know and then you know a couple minutes later then you'll see him talking to her the one where she's like walking through the crime scene around the house and she's like dang Conway looks real good well that was from six years ago so they jump around but it makes sense the way it's done is just I really really I, I so much respect for this guy for doing this but he's wanting to get to, to the bottom of his mother's murder he recorded himself going in to talk to the police all these years which at the end there was like a you know they went to court about that and he ended up winning you know ended up winning and stuff but 
um, and then some stuff does come about at the end. So it's going to continue, which is good. It's not just like they leave you hanging. But what was so interesting, so his mother was murdered. Um, he was, I think, he was at, in his early 20s then. He was out of the house maybe at that point. So maybe he's in his 30s now. Super cute guy. Like, so he's just, um, he's adorable, okay? But he also had a sister who was 17 at the time. I think she was going into her, like, junior year. She was in her junior, like, the end of her junior year, end-ish of her junior year. And, and then I believe her next year, she studied abroad. And then she just left the country after her mom passed, after her mom was killed, which we'll talk about. Um, so yeah, like I said, I wanted to do a deep dive here because I think the documentary had just come out when I talked about it earlier. And I said, my opinion probably isn't the popular opinion. I'm not going to talk about it. Just watch the documentary. So hopefully you guys have watched it. And I just want to talk about it. I just, I want to talk about it. Like my friend and I, like I said, talked about it so much yesterday. And I just want to kind of see what you guys think. If you have like the same kind of feelings. So what's cool about it too is it's like, you know, if you've ever watched one of those movies where they make you think it's someone different every time. Um... That's kind of how it is. So you go through different feelings, but it's never like they're purposely twisting you. They're just introducing different aspects and different people in his mother's life. So, you know, the first episode talks about what happened. One morning, you know, the story was that her daughter had gone to school. She had taken her daughter to school, and the story was that on her that when she came back, um, maybe someone was waiting there for her at the house. Uh, the house was kind of like back in the woods, real cute little house, near a golf course, there were some neighbors, but it wasn't just like in a like neighborhood and it was just happened outside. Okay, so the story was she took her daughter to school, that's what everyone has always thought. On her way home, she encountered somebody, someone encountered her, and she was murdered. There was like blood kind of near her car and like maybe where the murder had happened, and then um, like if you like diagonally to the door so like there was a little uh, front door of the house there was a little statue that was broken um, I don't think they ever said if the door was unlocked or if it was locked I don't know that was interesting the statue was broken kind of like coming you know what I'm saying why would the statue be broken her purse was strewn kind of in between where she was found in the house so did she go to the front door and she was unlocking it then someone you know and then she ran I don't know um, so she was, you know, kind of like a quick thing. And then from there, her body was moved to the side of the house. And if you can imagine like a lawn chair or something that you would have, um, like the long cushions that you would put on top of it, then some, which were stored in the family garage, which they said later in the story, which I think that's kind of important, were then placed on top of her all around so that no one would see. Okay, so then the daughter goes to school. The, the, or the daughter is at school, whatever. And then shortly after being at school, she starts calling her mom over and over and over and over again, come pick me up, pick me up, pick me up. Like that's what she's wanting her mom to do. And then her mom isn't answering, so she immediately calls her Aunt Conway. And her Aunt Conway, the mother's, her mother's sister, um, came to pick her up from school, and then they go home, and then immediately they discover the body. Conway says that the sister, when they first got there, said, something's wrong, I see that that's broken, that's broken, there's a purse, and the sister ran to the garage first. Per the, you know, and that's something that I kind of, you know, if the pillows were found in the garage, why would she, she was wanting to get home so bad, like why, and then she goes straight to the garage, but then I think someone said they, they, they would go in front, I don't know, so she didn't enter the house, she just, and then Conway like looked around the side, saw the pillows, Conway discovered her sister. Okay, so that's kind of the thing. And you know, something that you do know about this is obviously like when, you know, someone's looking at someone that's been murdered, whatever, you can, per, this is like, I know, but just bear with me. Like you can, you know, what you do know is how they were, you know, is it was there a gunshot? Like you can kind of figure out like the manner of death. Um, she was not shot. There were, um, it looked like she had been hit with something like very blunt like over and over and over and they believed it was a hammer i don't know if they ever found the family hammer that was in the house because every house has one you know i don't so that's interesting to know and then there were a few like stab things stab wounds just awful so awful so the first episode that's what we know right so the first episode and the son is like you know it's his documentary he's directing it like he's doing it you're the one he's the one that you see and he's taking you through all of this he takes you through his childhood 
uh, just kind of going through the family tree, everyone in the family. The first episode's heavy on the dad. The dad was into some shady stuff. They were just going through a divorce. And something important about that day that she was murdered is that that was going to be the actual in-person like trial day where they would both be there, where something was going to be, I think, actually like resolve about um, he owed her hundreds of thousands of dollars, I think like $300,000 in back child support, which um, they said that the daughter was really pushing her to go get. Like, Mom, go get the money. Go get the money. We need the money. We need, we need the money. So her court date was that day, always at 9.30 a.m., but she thought that it was at 2 p.m. because someone had called her and said, hey, the court date's going to be, the court's, court time's actually going to be at 2.30. Now, some people said, well, was that maybe, you know, do they need to look into the, you know, call log to see if that person that made the call, which they kind of put this together at the very end. We'll go back and like go through some things. Um, could that person have been the perpetrator trying to buy that time so that when the daughter's at school, she'll be at home and they'll have that window of opportunity? I think more so it was someone, because I don't think someone that was going to commit that type of a crime would have took that kind of trail or left that kind of I think they would have I think what happened there was that the dad was like pretty dead. I mean, he didn't want to pay this money. You know, I mean, there was some shady stuff going on. And he probably wanted her to miss the court date. I hate to say that. But it could have been him or someone in his calling and saying, hey, court's at 2. And then what? She just doesn't show up at 9.30. And then it's probably going to go more in his favor. Okay? That's what I think that was about. I don't think that was tied to the murder. I just really, truly don't. So I'll be curious in the next season to know, because he did get the court files or the um, the case files at the end. He was granted the case files, which was kind of the struggle through the whole time. He was trying to prove, like, this is a closed or a cold case. You're not doing anything actively to investigate it, so please turn the files over to me. So at the end, he was granted that, and that's how it ends. It was like October of 2020, you know, they go in with their masks, and it's kind of like, okay, almost present day, and he's getting these case files. I think one of the police officers or the investigator, somebody said, you know, I think this will give you a lot of closure, because if you see what's in this file compared with what you've already investigated, I think you're gonna have a lot of closure. So I'm curious to see what happens there. Um, so yeah, the dad, very suspicious. The son talks to the dad and he's recording these conversations the whole time. So you know the dad's gonna be like so mad. The dad's like, I'm not talking about it. I'm not talking about it. Let's just say I know more than there is to know, or but I'm not gonna talk about it. I know. And I and you know, you think, well, why can't he just say I'm innocent? And later on the dad does say I didn't have I think there was a time where he does say something like, but I think the dad was more so He'd never been like prosecuted for any of some like what Madison thought were some, some questionable business things that he found with his dad. A lot of money that was like not accounted for. A lot of stuff. so he had never been charged with anything. And I think the dad's reluctance to talk was more so protecting himself from his own like I don't want you to look into my finances. I don't because there was a lot of crazy stuff going on that maybe he could still get in trouble for. But I don't know. Perhaps the dad is guilty. He he was at court that morning. So it, what? It, so I guess it wouldn't have been him. So hypothetically, then they take you down the trail of it could be someone he hired. Now, here's what. This is a show where ta I'm not saying all this is hypothetical. That's what these shows are for. That They put this information out there showing everyone the whole premise is who, who did it, you know? So that's what I'm, I'm just commenting on that. Okay, so let's continue. So then, yeah, he's, well, could it have been like higher, higher situation? Here's why. Like the way that she was murdered, it was like a crime of passion. Like no one is going to hire... A, a hitman and then the hitman's gonna come and do what you know and, and and use a hand I don't know like just they're gonna be like I can't even talk about it. it's like so disturbing it's gonna a hitman or somebody is usually gonna be like hiding and it's gonna be like a gunshot or something and they're not gonna care to move the body and then know where to find the pillows in the garage no one would have that is what is so like mm, to me okay lots of red flags so then you know the dad whatever Okay, so then you go to Conway. Now, Conway's the sister, had a lot of problems in the past, very, um, she's gone, she's had a rough life, okay, and really there was a lot where I was like, oh my gosh, I do feel like it's Conway, but you know, then you look and you're thinking, Conway is so, she's up front, okay, she talks about in the past how she wanted to have her sister killed when her sister took her son away from her, because her sister, Barbara, who was, was um, protecting her nephew, Conway's son, um, from his mother at the time, like she she went to court to get custody of him, 
Conway was hurt by that and wanted to have her sister come. That was like back in like, that was probably like 20 years before any of this happened. And Conway's like, yeah. But then they had a beautiful relationship over the years, you know, just a sister up and down relationship, but she really loved her sister. And I think when you look at Conway, Conway is, I don't want to say, I think she's honest, but I don't think, I think she would have cracked. I think there's, she's had a rough life. She's carried this with her. She's the one that discovered her sister. But at the end of the day, I think she also like would not have been able to have carried this all these years and talk about it in the way she was talking about it. It would have come out, I do feel. So then Conway is like, oh, and now in the midst of all of this, the juiciest part, which I was like, she was a part of a pyramid scheme. She was a part of this like pyramid it was called like gifting tables where women would have these secret meetings. They'd bring money and it was, so it was like, and they'd build, you know, their, oh, you bring a friend, you bring a friend, you bring a friend. And it was this top secret thing. And one of her other aunts were involved in it, another woman. And they were like, you know, could people, and that was fascinating, okay? So it was a juicy, good documentary, so many layers. So then you're thinking, well, did someone that get burned about like their investment from that, you know, that didn't play out as well as they thought it would in this scheme that she got them involved in, it's uh, an angry person come back and like get her for that like I don't know okay I don't know but Conway said at one point in the documentary she goes I think Allie did it and Allie is the sister and he said well she was at school and Conway said I think it happened on the way to school so Conway goes through this whole thing and I always say like the easiest thing to describe or what makes the most sense is usually, you know, that that's just what you look at. And when you look at this theory, there's really nothing that, I don't want to say that doesn't make sense, but there was, I don't know. I really, when I've watched the first time, even through the, through the end, I thought it was, from what all they presented, I thought it was Allie. I watched it again and I thought the same thing. Behaviors are very strange. It's very odd that she left the country right afterwards, escaping, like, she's, Honestly, when you watch it, you'll see it's almost like she's a different person. Like she created this whole entire other persona. You know what I'm saying? And people, she was, people say, oh, she was running from her grief, from her mom. Well, a lot of people also could run from guilt. And the way it was shot, I was shocked that he did place so much emphasis on that. And I think he was like, look, to his sister, to his all his family, he's like, we're gonna present all these different, th you know, I'm not trying to say, I think that's like, you know, not she's not trying to implicate any of these family members, he's just trying to put it all out there. But just from like a film perspective, or like how they showed the sister, how just the different scenes that they showed her in, the questions, um, the time they spent on that, I think, you know, and it was interesting that he went to her wedding at the end, she's living in South America now, or, yeah, I think, and, um, it's just very interesting that they focused so much on her new life and part of a whole half, half of an episode was how she had had been she had been diagnosed with some um, I'm not gonna say exactly what it was because I don't want to get it wrong some sort of um, mental type of illness that affected her behaviors to be like uh, considered like in manic ways and um, so she had been diagnosed with that. And so the podcast I was listening to, they were like, how dare they say anything that it could be Allie? She had issues. And I'm like, yeah, I know that. But that also, did you watch like just her behaviors, her answers to the questions, how she never said, I want to find out who did this, how she put too many details in when they were describing her mourning. We got in the big white Honda and went to school. We went to this coffee shop. I got a chai, which is what I normally really like. It's my favorite. Then I went and did this and that. She never was like, oh, that's the last place I went with mom or oh, that's this or that. So I don't know. There was a lot of odd, um, you know, it was almost like even at the end when he told her, he said, well, look, Conway's saying that you did this. She thinks that you did this. And she was like, uh-huh, okay. Um, yeah, well, I mean, wouldn't he be just like, what? like disappointing you know what I mean it was just odd like I thought her responses were odd and now I'm not judging because everyone's different handles grief differently does all these different things differently so I'm not gonna judge any of that but I will say what Conway's theory was kind of to me I mean it makes sense it was the day of the trial the girl did not want to go to school that morning she wanted her mom to call her in sick instead the mother which also I have a big thing to say about that call to the school at the end which proves in the opposite direct, I don't know what they thought that proved. That made no sense to me, which I'll get there. 
just a few more minutes guys like bear with me okay <laughs> um but this is like the most important part to me um so the daughter wanted her mom to call her and stick to school and the mom ended up calling school and saying we are coming they were probably having a tough morning conway lived with them for a while and said that the sister was um just said a lot of really bad things about the mother and the sister's relationship and whatever you can watch that to see all that i'm not gonna get into all that but instead the mom called the school and said we're gonna she's not feeling well but we are running a little bit late we will be there so the daughter's pissed you know the daughter's angry for whatever mom leaves and the mom's wearing pajamas okay i don't even know if she had on shoes she was just gonna like get out the door take her kid to school so the mom's like i'm leaving so then you know just say the mom's like i'm leaving i'm getting in the car hypothetically and this is the theory that conway kind of put out there um walks out of the house perhaps then the daughter chases her out of the house knocks over the thing the mom throws her purse there's a struggle maybe she said don't get in the car maybe they grab the purse i don't know maybe the daughter came out of the house with um something from the house i don't know attacked her mom i don't know and then was so like oh my gosh like what have i done and that's what the therapist or the um not the therapist the the psychoanalyst, whoever the guy was that was there, or was he an investigator? He, whoever he was uh, investigating the crime, he was like, the way that she was dragged over here shows that whoever did it was, you know, just didn't want anyone to see because you could see through the golf course. If someone did it and was just like, I'm a, you know, hitman or I just, they do it and leave. You know what I'm saying? But she took the time to like take her over and then knew, knew where to find the cushions, got the cushions, covered her up. Um, that was just so odd to me. I don't know. I'm just saying, you know, anyone that watches this is going to naturally have a theory or naturally f feel that someone is, you know, and that's just what it, I tried to watch it from a different perspective thinking, well, maybe if I watch it now, not biased or not thinking it was, I thought it was even more so after the second time of watching it. So, and then the story was that she went to school she walked to school i think they were only like a few blocks from school it was not far at all and she had walked to school before did she go to the coffee shop did she not i don't know but she walked you know um walked to school signed in and signed in a little late and then started calling wanting to get back to the house a few hours later so what's odd it and but then i think god poor girl like if she didn't do this to have to watch this documentary that is so like they presented it you know that's heartbreaking but then i'm thinking like you know well what about the dad what about this conway and i'm like honestly their stories weren't as bad as the sisters so i don't know what to think um i just i don't know okay madison later calls the school secretary hey like hey can you look at that morning and see did Allie come to school at this time? Did she did she come in at this time? And she says, yeah, she signed in at, you know, maybe an hour late to school, you know? And to me, I'm like, yeah, it didn't, she, and she said, yeah, I talked to your mom that morning on the phone, you know what I'm saying? Like on the phone, she, they didn't specify that. Um, but the mom was in pajamas. I don't think she went in and signed in the daughter. When you went to high school, if you dropped your kid off late or if someone dropped you off late, you went in and you go to the office and you sign in. Your mother doesn't come in and sign in. So I think that's where a lot of it was like the mom didn't come in that The daughter signed in late, which in any way she would have, whether Conway's theory happened or whether Allie's totally innocent. She did, she would have signed in late. So I just don't get that. I don't get what that proved. If you get the, what that proved, please tell me because I think when I saw it the first time, I was like, oh, it proves that the mom came in and signed her in. But then when I watched it the second time, it was like the mom, it, it just kind of, it was a different thing. And when he calls Conway and says, look, I called the school and they did have a record of Allie checking in late that morning and Conway's like oh my gosh and she felt bad because she's like all these years I've said it was her and then you can he almost hear Conway like cracking like oh my god like well if it wasn't her who what like my whole life I've my this all these years I've thought it was her and now my theories who you could just hear her just breaking down almost and then later they have that hard conversation where Conway's like crying and um it's just really crazy, like the whole story. Then he goes to his sister's wedding and the focus is like, this is her new life, she's starting over. Also, 
the dad, you know, like I said, he made sure, you know, she, she left and went to, you know, the daughter went away for school um, the next, she, she basically left right after that and went to study abroad and then just never came back, you know, like she just made a new life for herself. And it's like, the dad spoke about the mom so angrily. And I'm like, gosh, how do you do that? Like, how do you talk about someone like, even if you had a bad divorce or a bad relationship and, you know, they're, they're, they were murdered, you know, like, how do you talk about that? And it's like, you know, if, he, let's say hypothetically, like if he was protecting the sister, say he, over the years, maybe had known, maybe some, or suspected that maybe if Conway's theory was correct, that Allie did have something to do with it. The dad knew that, you know, he's protecting his daughter and at the same time, to get through that anger or to get through that feeling toward his daughter, he's justified it by like, oh, like the mom made her do this or she was off so awful that she had to be killed by. I don't know, like, I, and again, it's all hypothetical. It's a show, I'm commenting on what happened on the show. I don't know, I mean, that's what you do with these. You come up with theories, you try to think about, I don't know, but I'm just curious, it's, it's out there. It's like out there in a big way on HBO and it's like, I cannot imagine if I was this guy and you've put all of your family members out there about this, which I think is great, like it needs to be done, but how you feel about like, outing everybody's stories and putting people out there in ways that make them all look guilty. Everyone looks, like I think, you know, that whole thing with Allie, okay, possibly, and then the dad, possibly, and then Conway, possibly, and then Aunt Jill, possibly, which she didn't even talk about. I don't know, I don't know. I really don't know. Everyone, he included things that made everyone look suspicious, which I guess is like what you have to do, but, um. Gosh, and then, but, but those things are done to make you think that they could possibly have something to do with it. So that's why I'm saying I feel the way that I feel. I don't know. So what are your theories? I think it's interesting. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's on HBO Max. You do have HBO, like you should be able to, to find it. Um, but anyways, you guys, I'll let you go. I'll link to what I can. I'll link to what I'm wearing and some of these things that I showed. Something about like when you go somewhere like that, you know, obviously you're finding such unique things. I can't link to those things, but, um, or you couldn't necessarily go and find those exact things, but hopefully I've inspired you to kind of check out some of your antique stores and check out some places like that to find some fun things because you never know what you're going to find. So anyways, y'all, thank you for watching. Love you so much. I'll post more pictures of this um, on my Instagram and I'll see you guys later. Bye y'all.